If you're someone who produces music or soundtracks with a high track count, the track list feature in Studio One is definitely an area where you should spend some time getting familiar with and making use of in your future projects and songs. So let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at the track list and see what this has to offer in helping us organize and navigate our uh, songs with these higher track counts more efficiently. Now for this tutorial, I've set up some random tracks here. This isn't actually a real song or anything. Um, I've got two folder tracks up at the very top here. We've got 10 audio tracks, four instrument tracks, and four automation tracks. And I've just added some blank events in here and a loop and a bit of MIDI here just for demonstration purposes when we're working with the track list. And in order to access the track list, we want to come over to the upper left hand corner within Studio One and these three horizontal bars. This is how we can then access it. So if I just click once, we then open up a pane here to the left. And this is the track list, which will provide us an overview of what's going on within our entire song. And we're just going to start from the left and then make our way across these different controls and see what each one does. Now all the way to the left here, we can first see that we have a track count and this will only count our audio and instrument tracks or MIDI tracks. And as we can see here, we have a total of 14 tracks altogether. And this makes sense because as I mentioned a moment ago, I have 10 audio tracks and four instrument tracks. And it may seem like the first six are missing, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, next to these numbers that show our track count, we have some little meters here. And uh, these level meters will kind of give us a brief readout. And this may seem a bit unnecessary for a song this small with this few tracks. But, you know, if you've got a really uh, complicated track that you're working on with 30, 40, 50 or more tracks, then these kind of can help you see, uh, give you level readouts and see what signals are passing through on which tracks. So if I actually go ahead and play this back, and remember this isn't a real song, I just set this up for demonstration purposes, then we can see the activity on these meters here. Now we're going to have two for our stereo tracks, one if we're working with a mono, and then this one here is an instrument track, so that's just showing the MIDI information our notes that are triggering are, the, are being displayed in this meter here. Now next to the meters we then have these white circles here. Now we can show or hide individual tracks by clicking on these circles, just clicking once. We can then hide any individual channel type that we would like, and then just clicking once again we can bring those back. Now, if you'd like to show or hide a group of channels quickly, just click, hold, and drag vertically. So I'll click, hold, and drag on this first one, and then we can remove everything out quickly like that. And go as far down as you want, or, or not as far. So then I'll click, hold, and drag back up to introduce everything back. Now, a quick side note about this show hide feature. If I F3 and bring up the console, we can see that we have a channel list here, which is similar to the track list, but this basically controls what we're seeing visually within the console. And we do have a way to, by default actually, these will be tied together. So as we uh, hide our tracks here, they will be hidden within the console. So these two are tied together. Now, this wrench icon here, if we would like to change that behavior, we can always deselect here the link show hide of track list and console. Otherwise, that's going to be on by default, and we can see how that behaves. So then if I come to the channel list here within the console and start to hide tracks here, then we can see these are going to be hidden in our channel list as well. And I'll just click to bring those back. And F3 to close out our console. We also have some additional show hide controls down at the very bottom of our track list here. And with these, we can control uh, which channel types are going to be viewable. So we've got audio, instrument tracks, folder tracks, automation, layers, and envelopes. So if we'd like to quickly hide all of our audio tracks, then we can just click this icon here 
Then we can see that those go away. We can hide our instrument tracks. Those are gone, our folder tracks, and our automation tracks. Now we're left with nothing. And we can just bring those back by clicking once. And so this is just gonna be, uh, provide a more convenient way to quickly hide particular channel types versus going and selecting the uh, aut our instrument tracks here and clicking individually. We can just click the icons down below here. Another feature that's available is track scenes. So we can actually set up our own scenes of what we would like to view. So if we had say six or eight drum tracks and we wanna set up a scene just for those so that we can view those within the arrange view, we can do that. Uh, so let's just do an example. So while everything is showing here, we can see all of these uh, channels are showing. So I'll go ahead and click the plus button. This is how we can add a scene. And then I'll call this all tracks hit enter to accept that. Then we can see that this is labeled here. I'm going to start with this first instrument track and deselect everything here. I'm just kind of arbitrarily doing this here to uh, show you simply how this works. I'll click the plus symbol and we'll call this top tracks. And uh, you know, as I mentioned in the previous example, you could do this for your drums, you could do this for background vocals. You could do this for your main vox, for your guitar parts, whatever you'd like. So now that we've done that, we can choose all tracks and then see all of our tracks. If we wanted to come to our top tracks, we can see our top tr tracks or whatever we'd like to set this up as. Now another useful feature down here is this lock icon. And so while we have a scene selected, we can lock that and then I'll come up to the all tracks and I'll lock that as well. So then in this way, if I scroll to the bottom here, select that bottom automation track, I'm gonna press T on the keyboard to add a new track. We've got an audio track, a count of one. I'll go ahead and press okay. Now this is our new track. So now that we've locked those scenes, this is basically provides you a way to filter out any new tracks that you may have so they won't, uh, I'm blanking on the word here, so that they won't kind of corrupt the scenes that you've set up. So if I come back to the top tracks, we can see our new track is not here. If I come to all tracks, our new track is not here. And that's because we locked these with this icon here. So any new tracks that you introduce to your song, they will not be added to any scenes that you have locked. Now, what we could do while we have all tracks selected, um, here is our new track, it's just hidden. So we could unlock that, show the new track, lock it again. Now we'll come to top tracks, which still is not showing this new track because we never unlocked it and added it. But if we come back now to our all tracks, we can see since we unlocked it and then showed the new track and then relocked all tracks, it now shows up. So I hope that that makes sense. Now, if we would like to remove any scenes, we would just click on the minus button there. Now we've got top tracks, I'll remove that. And now our scenes have been cleared. And I'll just go ahead and show everything again here. And this new track, I'm actually going to just select that and Shift T to remove it out. Now next in line, we have some icons here that will show the type of tracks that we're working with. So we've got folder, audio, instrument. And if I expand out this synth bass here, we've got some layers in there, some layer tracks. So I'll expand that out. Now this is the icon for layers. I'll close that back up for the moment. And then we've got automation. And it's also with these icons that we can actually rearrange our tracks by using the track list. So if I click hold on our organ track on this icon, I can then move that vertically up or down to wherever I'd like. Now if you have a ton of tracks listed here, you can see how this would be incredibly helpful for rearranging. Uh, in any way that you'd like. And I'll just go ahead and move that back up. And it's also with these icons that we could just click once to uh, select 
any channel that we'd like as well. Next to these icons, we then have some color bars that will help us easily identify tracks, especially if you've set up your song in such a way that, say, you have eight drum tracks, and you select all of those and then change the color palette. All of your drum tracks, you say you set them as red, your synths you change to purple, your vocals you change to uh, yellow, whatever color scheme that you use, then you'll see in your track list, you'll have a group of red, you'll have your purple, and that will make things a lot more easy, easily identified here. Now next we have some arrows here, there are drop down arrows, and this basically means that there's more going on to this particular channel, uh, and we can just click on these arrows to expand that out. So if we come to our drums, and we, were, we wanted to talk about this anyway because it seems like we're missing our first six tracks, and that's because they're placed in this folder track. And we can see that the icon here is indicating that this is a folder track, and we know that there's some more uh, involved with this channel because we have the arrow there, and if I click once, we can expand that out. And then we see here are our first six uh, audio tracks. And we can see here in the arrange view that our folder track has been expanded out. So if I click on this folder uh, icon there on the track itself, we can see that that changes within the track list as well. And this arrow is back to its normal position. Now for the synth bass, we just saw that on this instrument track a moment ago. If I expand that out, we have some layers on this track. So if I click on this arrow here, we can expand our layers out. And we can see those indicated here. So even with this expanded out, we can click on these circles and hide those. And then bring those back by clicking again. And to hide the layers, we can just click there. And to close everything back as it was, click once on that arrow. And then as we can see, our two Vox tracks have arrows as well. So if I click on that, then we're shown envelopes here. And if I click here, we can now see our envelopes for the Vox 1, which is what we've expanded out. And again, we can click on these white circles there, the show hide. And I'll go ahead and return this back to as it was. And the very last thing we'll take a look at is we kind of have a hidden display here. And that is to show any channels that are in groups. So if I come to the border here where we have the double arrows and click, hold, and drag to the right, expand that out, then we can see that we do actually do have two channels that are in a group here. Our Vox 1 and Vox 2 are in a group called channels. So if I select Vox 2, they're both selected here. And uh, they are in a group, so if I change the level, then they're both going to be changed. If I arm them for, uh, if I solo, they'll both be soloed. Mute, arm for recording, monitor. Whenever you have channels grouped, then these functions will apply to all of them. Okay, and so that is working with the track list. And if you aren't, if you weren't familiar with it, I hope that you decide to make use of it in the future. Or if you are someone who is working with a large amount of tracks, uh, it can definitely help you navigate and kind of get a handle on your song and become more efficient, efficient with getting around. And with that, we'll wrap up here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.